Throughout the centuries, various church thinkers or theologians have attempted to explain the Trinity in different ways. For the purposes of this unit, you need to know about two of these examples, St. Augustine and Catherine Lacunia. St. Augustine took the verse, God is love, from 1 John 4, 8, and explored what it meant. Augustine argued that in any relationship of love, there in fact needs to be three parts. He said, true love is a trinity of lover, beloved, and the love that binds them together into one. If we break this down, we can see that firstly, there needs to be a lover, the person who is doing the loving. Secondly, there needs to be a beloved, the person who is the object of the loving. And thirdly, there is the love itself which is communicated between the lover and the beloved. Augustine applied this idea to the Trinity, and this is what he described. The lover is God the Father. The beloved is God the Son. Remember, the Father says, this is my beloved Son at his baptism. The love is the Holy Spirit, which communicates the love between God the Father and God the Son. Augustine was mainly focused on the inner life of the Trinity, i.e. what is going on within the triune God. This is referred to as the immanent trinity. For Augustine, the implication of this was that God could quite happily exist in himself as a loving community of persons without the need for the created universe. In other words, God did not need to create the universe to know or feel love. He was completely self-sufficient. God is not dependent on creation. Instead, it is the other way around. Creation is dependent on God and therefore it is only right and proper that creation should worship God since they depend on him for their existence. Catherine Lacuna was a 20th century theologian who built on Augustine's ideas, but also emphasised some different aspects of the triune God. Lacuna agreed with Augustine that love is at the heart of the nature of God, and so the relationship between Father, Son and Holy Spirit that she describes is very similar to Augustine's. She would say that God the Father and God the Son have always existed in relationship without beginning or end, and the Holy Spirit is the loving bond that joins them together. However, Lacuna thought that theologians like Augustine focused too much on the inner life of the Trinity, what we call the immanent Trinity. She argued that the only way humans can truly know what God is like is by examining the ways in which God has chosen to reveal himself, what is called God's self-revelation. Specifically for Lacuna, this meant looking at two things. Firstly, how God revealed himself by coming to earth in the incarnation of Jesus and then returning to heaven and making it possible for humans to do so too in the process of redemption. This connects two of the other major doctrines in Christianity, the incarnation and redemption, to the doctrine of the Trinity. Secondly, how God reveals himself by working in the lives of people by guiding them to participate in God's offer of redemption. In other words, God does not remain distant and separated from his creation, but rather through the person of the Holy Spirit is present within the lives of human beings. Lacuna wrote, The doctrine of the Trinity summarizes what it means to participate in the life of God through Jesus Christ in the Spirit. In other words, it is this aspect of God's love coming to earth and allowing humans to share God's love, which is the most important aspect of the Trinity. Theologians call this the economic Trinity, as it emphasizes the way in which humans can engage with or transact with God's love. Augustine said, If you see love, you see the Trinity. What he meant was since God is love, every time we experience love, we experience God. The Apostle John wrote, if we love one another, God abides in us. Put simply, the church believes that it has a responsibility to share God and his love with the rest of the world. This happens in two main ways. Firstly, evangelism. The word evangelism comes from the Greek word for gospel or good news. Evangelism means to share God's love through words by telling people about God's love. At the end of Matthew's gospel, Jesus gave this instruction to his apostles. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. An evangelist is a person who makes it their aim to tell people about God's love and encouraging them to follow the teachings of Jesus. Some choose to do this in obvious ways, such as preaching on the streets, while others do it in less obvious ways, by telling people about God in their daily lives or work. However, just telling people about God's love on its own is not always effective. The Apostle James said, Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and food. If one of you says to them, Go in peace, keep warm, and be well fed, 
but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by actions, is dead. As St. James teaches, just telling people about God's love is not enough. It must be backed up by actions. Therefore, it is necessary for the second way of showing God's love, which is called mission. The word mission means to be sent out with a purpose. Broadly speaking, this means to share God's love by showing people God's love through actions. There are many people within the church who are engaged in missionary work, such as running hospitals, shelters, hospices, and these are all an attempt to show love to others through actions. Thanks for watching. I've been Mr. McMillan.